Thinking Aloud, conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with parapsychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. I'm going to talk today a little bit more about unidentified aerial phenomenon or UFOs or UAPs. Uh, the day before I release this in presence monologue, I will have released the interview with Leslie Kane, the uh, investigative journalist who has been publishing articles in the New York Times about UFOs and uh, the most recent revelations concerning uh, possible retrieved materials from UFO crash sites. Uh, I do have a, a bit of additional information uh, to update you regarding UFOs. So if you're if you have an interest in UFOs, keep viewing this monologue. Uh, let me begin by referring back to my mentor. Arthur M. Young, who was the founder of the Institute for the Study of Consciousness in Berkeley, where I had the great privilege uh, to live there with Arthur Young back in 1973, in 1974, as I recall. And he was, uh, as I mentioned, the inventor of the Bell helicopter, the first commercially licensed helicopter, the one with the little bubble and skids. And uh, I remember vividly him saying, of course, he was my age when I knew him then. He was in his 70s. I was in my 20s. And But he said to me, if he could start all over again, what he would most like to do with his life was to build a UFO, to invent what we think of today as, as UFOs. And and he was an inventor. Uh, he, he worked uh, for decades on the helicopter. It didn't come to him uh, like Tesla's inventions uh, that I've referred to in previous monologues or the inventions of Buck Charlson fully formed in his mind so that it worked the first time. He experimented and experimented on faulty designs until he finally, through dogged persistence, got the correct design for the helicopter rotor system. Now, I'm also going to link to a earlier in presence monologue, an earlier in presence monologue featuring my discussions of Jack Sarfati. And I, I think the title of that monologue is something like Conscious uh, Computers Aboard a UFO. And uh, indeed, that's what Sarfati himself is, is, is uh, claiming and, and that monologue will be very interesting uh, to you if you haven't been following these discussions. It'll sort of bring you up to date quite a bit, uh, in terms of where we are because it was made in 2018 and it seems as if a crucial year uh, regarding revelations uh, concerning UFOs was 2017. That's the year that uh, we finally learned about the uh, sightings going back to 2004 of uh, uh, the Nimitz Aircraft Carrier Group uh, off the coast of California where they had many videos and radar tracings of unidentified aerial objects uh, and eyewitness reports showing that uh, they had capabilities vastly in excess of anything available to the U.S. Navy, at least. Who knows? Maybe the Air Force was experimenting. There's been some suggestion of, of that. But uh, that's also the same year that the administrator of NASA, Charles Bolden, who was also an astronaut, was put on a, a six months sick leave because he made the claim, the astonishing claim, that uh, we're about to be invaded by aliens from outer space. He said that invasion is almost certainly going to occur by the year 2025. And uh, after that, uh, he, he was sent out on sick leave and NASA announced that uh, even though he was the top guy, the NASA administrator, that his opinion did not represent the opinions of NASA. 
Uh, for all I know, they do represent the opinions of my friend Jack Sarfati. Jack, um, subsequently uh, has gotten very involved in analyzing the uh, videotapes and the eyewitness reports from that Nimitz Terrier Group sighting going back to 2004. And he believes that he understands how these vehicles operate, that uh, uh, their operation is consistent, he thinks, with his vision of what he calls post-quantum physics. I've described it a bit earlier in the previous monologue. It's really a, a, a f way of looking at physics that's uh, consistent with Einstein's view of uh, a deterministic universe, a materialistic universe in which consciousness is an epiphenomenon. But uh, uh, he believes that that is a worldview which will enable us to understand how it is possible that uh, the UFOs themselves are conscious. And uh, here, here's the interesting thing about uh, Jack's claims. As, as far as I know, he has been very vociferous in uh, saying that he knows how to build these kinds of devices along with conscious computers. And everybody else that I know in, in the physics community, and I have to preface this by saying I'm no physicist. I haven't taken a single college course in physics. I've gleaned what I've gleaned from the many interviews I've done with people in physics, but I have no claim to any real technical knowledge in physics. Uh, but the physicists I know who uh, interact with Jack, and I've been on his mailing list for years, so I get a lot of the correspondence, all basically say his ideas are speculative. At best, they lack any kind of an experimental support. And if you push him, Jack will acknowledge that this is true. Uh, he hopes to raise the money to do the experiments, which I gather would be very sophisticated and expensive maybe amounting to hundreds of millions of dollars to really test his theories. But he argues that that kind of money should be spent because of the potential threat that these vehicles pose. And, uh, you know, conservative military analysis suggests that even though they haven't indicated any threat towards us, they appear to be quite benign. Uh, what if one of our enemies, what if Russia or China figured out how to build them? In fact, Jack would be very happy to share his knowledge with Russia or I suppose with China or Iran. He's already indicated that he thinks that people in those countries are very interested in what he has to say. And uh, even though there's no indication of an actual threat, Certainly, one has to be concerned about a potential threat because uh, anyone who possesses this kind of technology could clearly overwhelm us. Uh, there's also the uh, suggestion that this technology, uh, conscious computers, uh, has other military applications. The, the very idea of quantum computers, which uh, is, is an idea that emerged, actually, according to the historian David Kaiser, from some of the thinking that Jack and his colleagues, uh, including some of my friends like Nick Herbert and Saul Paul Surag, were involved in in the 1970s, that the present push for conscious, uh, for quantum computers emerged out of their early interest in Bell's theorem, the EPR effect, quantum entanglement, and so on. I think it's a stretch. I think that uh, one of the reasons personally uh, that I'd be doubtful about the uh, theories uh, that Jack is pushing is because they're so mainstream. They're based on a materialistic metaphysics, and and I'm inclined towards the uh, arguments of uh, my friend Bernardo Castrup, who is definitely not a materialist. That aside, the truth of the matter is we just don't know, and Jack might very well be correct.
in, in his suppositions. And it's also worth talking about another friend of mine, Hal Putoff, uh, who worked closely with Russell Targ at SRI developing and Ingo Swan developing the original remote viewing protocols. After Hal left SRI and uh, put Ed May in charge of the program, I might mention parenthetically, I suspect Ed May, who is also a physicalist, would feel, be favorably declined, uh, inclined, favorably inclined to Jack's hypothesis because it would be consistent with his own metaphysics. But uh, in any case, back to Hal Putoff. When, when he left SRI in the remote viewing work, he moved to an institute in Austin, Texas, where he developed some very advanced thinking about zero point energy and its implications for space travel. So, so Hal has been very interested in, uh, UFO technology. It's, it's it, quite interesting to me that some of the leading physicists thinking about space travel and UFO technology are also people serious thinking about parapsychology. Hal Putoff certainly being one of them. Uh, Jack Sarfati, I guess you'd have to say, also another. And, and I could add additional names. But I want to say one more thing now about Hal Putoff. And that is, he did give a talk in 2018 to a combined meeting of the International Remote Viewing Association and the Society for Scientific exploration in which he uh, discussed uh, the UFO material and in particular a material retrieved possibly from a crash site and he was very specific that somebody sent a, an object decades ago to uh, Art Bell the now deceased uh, radio talk show host used to have coast to coast. I've been a guest on the show a number of times. But uh, apparently it was sent anonymously in the mail to Art Bell from somebody who simply said that he is a uh, former or current member of the military, that this object that was sent in came from a, a, a UFO crash site of some kind. And uh, Hal Putoff described the object, and I have a feeling this is the sort of thing that uh, Leslie Kane alluded to in the interview that was released the day before I release this monologue. And here's the point. Uh, the object was made out of alternating layers of bismuth and magnesium. The bismuth was as thick as a human hair. The magnesium layers uh, ten times the thickness of a human hair. And Hal Putoff pointed out there was no known source of uh, manufacturing such a uh, composite in the, in, in, in the world as we know. Furthermore, it'd be very, very difficult to manufacture. And furthermore, at least back then, decades ago, they didn't even know why anyone would. Pretty sure that's the the object that Leslie also was describing in in that interview. But subsequently, new developments indicate that uh, there there could be some very practical uses for this sort of thing. And Jack Sarfati, in some of his writing, alludes to the idea that a substance like this might be useful in creating space time warps. Uh, of the sort that uh, would be required for the incredible maneuvers that these objects uh, uh, observed in the year 2004 have shown, and not to mention many, many other observations of unidentified aerial phenomena. Before I close, let me just add that Jack has recently commented on uh, the interview with Jason Reza Giorgiani here on the New Thinking Aloud channel about time travel, which is completely relevant to this discussion because these UFOs may very well be uh, vehicles for the purpose of time travel. The uh, model of uh, physics that Jack is working with, uh, as conventional as it is in terms of, of the materialistic metaphysics, is one that allows for time travel. And uh, time travel uh, or retrocausality is very important in Jack's own model of consciousness itself. 
it suggests that, um, in closing, let me say, it does suggest to me that uh, some of the more extreme views of, of time travel and their military threats, as expressed in the Tom Cruise movie, The Edge of Tomorrow, with Emily Blunt, might be uh, an actual possibility, closer than we know. Uh, that movie came out in 2014, and maybe it was uh, one of the reasons that stimulated the imagination of astronaut Charles Bolden to suggest that we are about to be invaded by uh, uh, some entities with vastly superior technological capabilities. Now, I'm sharing all of this with you now. Um, I certainly don't wish for anybody to become <laughs> frightened or alarmed uh, by these prospects. I'm not. I don't feel that there's anything really frightening here in spite of the fear-mongering going on in some quarters. But it does raise the question of whether we might be entering into a new world with technological advances happening so vast in their significance and so quickly that uh, we, we may all, within a, a few short years, be thrust into a very, very different world. I'll leave you with those thoughts and thank you for being with me.